I thought I'd do this because we don't. I don't think we've we've done this before. In this the box that this audio line, because I'm just about to send it back. Mr. Chippy's repaired the power lead. There was a couple of inches coming out of a rewirable plug, so he's done that. Um, in the same box, which had, they'd bought this set off eBay, was a net set SBR meter, which is uh, was part of Tandy's. Um, so it's uh, it would have been badge realistic at one time, or I was it Archer they brand, they branded them, and uh, it's a field strength meter as well, but it hasn't come with the antenna, so it's it's just as it is. But I want to see whether this works as a courtesy to the customer. There's going to be no fee for this. They've not asked me to do it. I did query it with them. They said no, it's just kind of stayed in the box when it got posted on to you. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug this into our test set now oh, hang on a minute this is in and out if they've somebody's labeled wrongly they put in and it's printed as antenna so we'll just connect that as it should be and i don't know what that says it's so indistinct. I'll just put the other glasses on. Yeah, so it says transmit, trans for transmitter and and for antenna. So the in and out is actually back to front, which has been written on there. So that doesn't help anybody. Now, I'm not suggesting this customer knows nothing about CB, may know an awful lot. So we're not teaching people to suck eggs here. So we'll connect this patch lead between the CB radio and what we now know to be the input socket. And so if I select channel 20 in the centre of the band on the radio, uh, put this to calibrate, we'll make sure that's well down. So when I press transmit I should be able to set full scale deflection. and I can't. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I say there's no fee for this because it just wouldn't be worth doing. We're going to go inside it. Well these case screws go on and on and on. How long is that? So, it's not my favourite type. My favourite type is the ones with the metal trough line. This is just done on a, a printed circuit. There's no dry joints there. No, there's Nobody's done any silly rewiring. So there's no reason why it should not function properly. So it may just be dirt on the control. So we'll get Mr Chippy's service oil because... My spout's gone missing. It may be that control needs replacing, in which case we won't be pursuing it. As I say, they've not asked me to do this. I just wonder if the switch is uh, a bit dirty. You just don't know where these things have been. Netset was a name they were using in the 90s instead of Archer on the test instruments. So I won't screw that together, but we'll just see whether it's, we've actually can get it to work now. So staying in the calibrate mode, yeah. So we can now get the calibrate point. So for those of you who don't know about STBR meters, when you try to look for the reflected power to make sure your aerials match properly, um, you'll put it on the centre of the channel which you're using it. So if that's 2781 like I am, the UK 40 channels will be on channel 20. If you're doing that on CPT European channels, again it'll be channel 20. And if you've got a set which where you want it to work on 80 channels, uh, so it's covering CPT and the UK channels, well, it needs to be done either on channel 40 of CPT or channel 1 of UK channel, so it's in the centre of the band. So uh, we're in the centre of the band, so the idea is you keep the transmitter, turn the knob until you get the meter needle to the set line which is there then you can just flick the switch 
and you get a reading, which in this case is 3 to 1, which is disgraceful. But we know the aerial isn't 3 to 1. So, we know, sorry, we're on the test set. The test set is absolutely spot on at all times because it has a dummy load in it. So I can prove that by plugging the test set now into the MFJ analyzer. So if that net set meter is adjustable, then fine. If it isn't, there's something wrong and it wants to go in the bin. So let's see what frequency this was last used on. 70 megs, right. So we'll just pop it to 27. Twenty seven point seven, so we're somewhere in the centre of the band. As actually as high as it'll go on that range. Um we're in the UK band. Uh, I'd have to go over to the twenty eight meg band and, and turn it down a fraction. Well we'll do that. We'll do that just for the uh, hell of it. There you go. So on the twenty eight meg band it will just top go down to the seven nine there we go doesn't I'm not bothered about the accuracy so our SWR is of course one to one because it's perfect so what we'll now do is we'll disconnect that you'll watch the meter go sky high and we'll connect our aerial which we know is about 1.5 to 1 so here's our normal CB aerial we use for these tests and as you can see, it's, it's about 1.4 to 1 at that kind of frequency. So that's channel 20. So let's go up the channels towards 28 megs. So as we get towards 29.9, we're about 1.5 and a bit, 1.6 SWR. And as we go down the channels towards channel 1, which is just there, 27.60 something. It's actually a bit better. It's about... Um, 1.3 to 1 so let's go into CPT band and as we come down it's back up at 20 so this is centered across the 80 channels although we only use it on the UK set so we'll have done that when we installed it for the demonstration purposes so we now need to see whether we can adjust this has to be our meter or whether it's going to be bin fodder because it certainly isn't accurate so we'll turn that off unplug it put it on one side because it doesn't live in here it lives in my living room that where do you expect it to live so once again we'll go back to plugging the test set in with its dummy load So once again we'll key up, calibrate, there's our calibrate point. And this time, you know what I was doing before, don't you? I was touching the field strength thing as I was turning the knob. So that was user error on my part. So keeping my hands away from that, It's not reading the same thing twice, is it? No, it's not reading the same thing twice. So I don't know whether we've got a duff diode in there.
Okay, we've got a diode there, that's reading fine, and the other diode. is also showing as a diode. So you've got another diode on the printed circuit board there. Hang on a minute, there is a preset. There is a preset just down there on the printed circuit board. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. So once again we'll set the calibrate point. And hopefully I can adjust the preset for a one-to-one -one SWR. So we've got another situation where we've got dirty track. So again, we'll use the service all on it. Just waggle that around a bit and try again. So now we've got an SWR of one to one when I key up. So there's our forward position. There's our reflected position, and that's how it should be. So now we'll put our aerial on it. Which we know, on this channel, is around about 1.5 to 1. Now some of the Archer SWR meters were superb. I'm not saying that this one is. It's not bottom of the range, and it certainly isn't um, high up. So once again, we'll set the calibrate. That hasn't changed and SWR it's reading about 1.3 so as we go up the channels channel 40 we know it's about 1.6 and this is says 1.5 as we go back down the channel it's 1.1 so I would say I mean this isn't as accurate as that MFJ thing that's fine so I think we've uh, we've helped him out there. So I'm going to quickly disconnect the aerial, key up for one second, and of course it's gone off the clock. Good. So we'll put that back together, and now he's got a working SWR meter. So I'm glad I found that, and it was just a matter of getting some service cell switch cleaner. We used the Super 10. And I'm going to put some labels on this for them. So I'll just pause the video while I do that. Right, so I just cleaned the back up. Um, we just stuck antenna and radio on it. And by, by using our spray power con, getting rid of the marker pen, you can now see, it clear, see more clearly ant and trance. But I use the word radio. It's more obvious that people aren't um, hobbyists and just want to use it like these people do. I'll just tighten that up um, in their business. In fact, they're both a bit on the loose side. I think this has been fiddled with big time, and when you consider it's got a, a hole drilled through the top, you know, so it's been messed about with, and um, it's nice for it to be working again. So it just wants a couple of uh, uh, stick on rubber feet, and it'll be back to the land of the living. But I mean, even this is going to be 25 years plus old, but it's, uh, it's fair enough. Right, so just for those of you who might have found that interesting, that's got the net set SWR meter back into working order and it was catalog number 21523 manufactured in China <laughs>